What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Monday, June 19th, 2023, Juneteenth here in the United States. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the indie informer, Jill Grote. Hello, Jill. Hello. How are you? I'm doing very well. It's a lovely day in San Francisco. It is for once. I know. You know what I mean? Blue skies, sun's I brought all it there. here with me. Oh, look at you. Thank you so much, Jill. Jill? Yes. You have been demanded on this show for quite some time. Uh, of course, I knew you when you were over at Game Informer. Yes. Then you said, get out of here, Game Informer. <laughs> I don't need you anymore. And you started the Indie Informer. For people who don't know, who are you and what's the Indie Informer? Uh, so, as you said, I started at Game Informer. Still love it. Still love everybody there. Please go support it. Didn't kick That's it out. That's a lie. No, I love Game it. Game Informer, no, we're great. coming for you. No, we love it. Everyone there is fantastic. Uh, and it was great seeing you all. Um but yeah, we had layoffs while I was there. Uh, I did not get caught in the layoffs, but uh, it broke my heart. And I didn't want to be in a place that I loved and resented. Sure. So what I decided to do instead was to take some time off, enjoy life. Uh, and I realized I couldn't really do life without this. Um, so I started up the Indian Informer about a year after, with, after that. Uh, and the Indian Informer is named because that was my nickname at Game Informer. Nice. Uh, so thank you, especially to uh, the Alexes, uh, for coming up with that. But uh, yeah, now I cover exclusively indies, and I am trying very hard to highlight the the small games to the big games. You know, I've got Triple I in there. I've got solo developers. Uh, basically anything that's indie that comes through my inbox, um, I, I try to get through it all. It's been hard. So recently, very recently, just I think last this, at the beginning of this month, time has no meaning, <laughs> um, I started to expand. So I started a Patreon. Just nice. plug that. Patreon.com slash the Indian Informer. That is correct. Nailed it. <laughs> and uh, those, a, a lot of that goes to getting new writers in. And I just announced that I was going to be working with John Carson, another former Informer. I'm very Fantastic. excited. That's awesome. Congratulations on the success. You know what I mean? I think that's the thing about games journalism in hard, right? Games, games press. Uh, it's hard to keep a job lately with yeah. all this stuff going mm -hmm. on. And I can only imagine, as you said, you know, you leave the place and then you have to figure out what you want to do, but you want to do this. I, you can, I mean, they know they can take it from me, right? It's, it's terrifying, right, to start your own thing, to do this independent thing, and to take a chance. And so it's awesome to see you finding success. I'm glad you started a Patreon. I'm glad people are coming over to support you. Me too. <laughs> uh, then it begs the question. Of course, kind of funny. You know that I love indies. Janet loves indies. Mm -hmm. Blessing loves indies. We, yeah. do it, we do our best, but we are very mainstream as well in terms of like we're going to do AAA stuff and the traditional coverage. So I love having you on as an expert in the field. <laughs> what for the, we have six months left in the year, right? It has been a bonkers year for video games. Uh -huh. I think we're getting to that point where there is an argument that this is the best year ever for games. When you look ahead for the next six months for 2023, what indies are speaking to you that we need to know about? So of my list, you can check out at theindianformer.com. Uh, of my list of anticipated games, the ones that I'm still looking forward to, I have two, one for very selfish reasons and one uh, just looks fantastic and I'm excited. Uh, I'm going to start with selfish. Sure. Uh, it's Please. called Spirity. Spirity? Yeah. Okay. It's all one word, Spirity. Uh, it is a sort of pixelated, um, spirited away, oh, okay. essentially. Like you, you play as a writer, you've gone into the country trying to fix your writer's block, uh, you stumble across, you know, like you do whenever you go out to the country, uh, a magical teapot that of course. allows you to see spirits and, oh my gosh, there's already a little thing of it. Oh, um, Barrett's on top Barrett's of it. Barrett's so beautiful. good. And that's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, we like to not tell Barrett ahead of time. We could have said <laughs> what games we were going to talk about. We didn't know such thing, no. but Barrett's did, so good. Did I have to take a shot in the dark on how to spell spirit tea? Yes. You did <laughs> it. I nailed it. I What'd nailed you come it. up with? What so you good. With? Spirit, and then at the end of it, T, like yeah, T-E-A. Like T-E-A. Oh, see, I would have gone T-E-E. -E. Nope. Mm. Like a t-shirt. No. So your job is to run a bathhouse for spirits. Awesome. Uh, and do a lot of cool, fun things. It's a solo developer. I'm very excited to play it. But on top of that, uh, being just excited because it's a great game, I'm also an NPC in the game. Oh, no, wait, that's <laughs> awesome. Congratulations. Look at so, that. You get out there, you do the work, you get yeah. put in the game. So if you play, you could be my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right. What, so what's a non-selfish pick? Uh, so the non-selfish pick is going to be Nine Souls. Okay. And that's N-I-N-E-S-O-L-S. Okay. Um, it is a Metroidvania 2D 
the most beautiful hand-drawn graphics. And anyone who knows me knows that if you've got a hand-drawn game, I'm in. That's it? That's it right there. 100% Barrett. Um, it is sort of like Sekiro in the way that its combat works. A lot more uh, defense and blocking at the right times uh, instead of like just straight kill, kill, kill. Yeah. Um, but just really beautiful, really interesting. I got to play a little bit of the demo. Unfortunately, it did get pushed back a little bit later. It was supposed to come out uh, sometime in the second quarter, and now it's coming out sometime in the fourth quarter. This and is the I, thing with these indies. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just delaying their game. You know what? However right. long they have to. I agree. I'm whatever not, whatever you know. makes the game the best. Yeah, I'm 100% down for that. Sea of Solitude. <laughs> Uh, speaking of Sea of Solitude, uh, of course, Steam Next Fest is happening yes. right now. It has kicked off today. Wanted. Of course, these are a gajillion indies up there. A yes. lot of them have demos. A lot of them are releasing uh, uh, release dates for it. We'll get to some of those new dates. But for you, I know it's this morning. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's only 10 a.m. Yeah. Have you gotten on there? What on there is a must play? What What are you recommending from Steam Next Fest? Uh, so I have had some people throw demos my way yeah. um, to do early stuff. But the things that I want to shout out uh, are things either, uh, I'll start with the things that I have played. Obviously, we've got a connection here with Little Kitty Big City. We sure do. <laughs> I played over at uh, the SGF. Yeah. Uh, adorable. You put a hat on a cat and... Let's go get some shinies. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let's knock bagels and phones out of people's hands. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, this is great. Platforming a little bit. Yeah. It's great. Uh, I got to play uh, Shogun Showdown uh, also at GDC. It is a very interesting concept. And one of the selling points, I'm not sure why, was that you could play it all with one hand. Okay. So you move your little character, and it's a strategy game on a platform, sort of floating platform. And you move the character, and when you move your character or make any sort of turn uh, changes, you the other enemies also move at the same time. Yeah. So you have to be sure that like even turning around is a thing because and I killed myself many times just thinking that wasn't going to be the smallest thing and yeah. they just like come in and try to kill you but it is this m amazing little roguelike oh my god Barrett you are blowing my mind <laughs> um no that's 100% it it is uh you level up as you kill people you get more cards you can kind of see the cards at the bottom are your actions and they cool down so you have to be careful when you use them it, it is just a fun it's Looks one great. of those Close games where you think you're going to play for five minutes. Yeah. And then you look up, it's been an hour. Okay. Uh, so definitely check that out. That's one that I haven't heard a lot of people talking about, and I kind of want to get the word out. Okay. I think the last one I'll go for here is uh, Cataclysmo. Okay. I, it's not, I can't say it as well as the developers. Okay. But it was revealed I, at one of the showcases, I want to say even before Summer, summer Showcase. Okay. Um, it's like a, you are building a castle brick by brick and then also defending it, and it just looks gorgeous, and I have really no idea what else it's about. So that's <laughs> well, that's all, when it's that good, that's all you yeah, need. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's sort of why I love uh, Steam Next Fest, because it is the real chance for you to totally. get your hands on it. And like Talking about uh, the summer showcases, um, this is really what it is, like the perfect e3 experience of like not having to wait in line and just getting your hands on all these yeah. things so you know go steam next fest is up until next monday go check some stuff out check some things out that you wouldn't check out normally uh try it's free try it costs <laughs> nothing grows the economy yeah go do it for sure for real because of course this is such a big deal for so many developers yeah. of course the biggest thing i ever hear from indie devs when we did our gdc stream it was a big point for us to make sure we drove this home if you like the game, wishlist the game. Yes. That actually helps them out so much. Yeah. So even if you just saw something here and you're never, ever going to go play it or whatever in, in terms of uh, like this week, go in there and still wishlist something if it spoke to you. But go in there and do a whole bunch of stuff. And I, I love going in and wishlisting stuff just that catches my eye. Doesn't mean I'm ever going to buy it. Doesn't mean I'm going to mm -hmm. pre-order it, but it helps me keep a track of it when I, when yeah. I pop up and see what's it's going on. It's very helpful for me because I keep a calendar of indie releases. Yeah. Um, Can I subscribe to that? Is there a way you got a yeah, Google calendar? Go, go to my website and subscribe and okay, you should great. be able to get it. Um, like <laughs> um, but speaking for games, I have a special game that I've thought of just for this occasion oh. for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> so this is going to be a, a Greg Miller ass game. Love it. Uh, it is an hour long. Love that. It's gameplay is light to put it mildly. Okay. Um, but 
the story is solo developer own personal story is about a psychosis and his personal break from reality okay and seeing that descent and coming back out of it okay in just an hour and okay i it's called of moons and mania uh this one's gonna be harder for barrett to find so good luck but it is an astounding game to experience that's it oh well, okay it's and it's text-based it it sort of is you're playing as that little white dot and you have to kind of pick your dialogue option oh yeah but as you get more and more like your mental illness starts to descend it gets harder and harder to pick things gotcha. that are and it just tells the story of, of of this very personal deep thing that happened to this person that you don't get to see a lot so i feel like this would definitely be up your alley <laughs> and i don't want you to miss it because it's a, again solo developer they were not marketing i got an email and they're like please check this out and i did i'm like this is a this is something you do not see um so it came out late last year and i want to make sure to put that on your calendar i have uh, added it to my it's free yep which is great so yep. it's already in my library on steam now and then i'm also tweeting out uh the thing that says uh, when jill says get it i get it <laughs> and i'll put in the link there too and that's it. all you're going to be doing this whole show now <laughs> anyway something else <laughs> happened in the news blah, blah. jill's got this <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure you would okay great that's for me anything yep. else you want to get i out? brought a second thing for the jabroni boys especially oh! Andy. oh uh there is a steam next best demo of myth force which is, is, is still in early access in um, Epic Game Store. So the fact that it's on Steam, Steam is very awesome. interesting. Yeah. Uh, but it is a sort of roguelike uh, oh, dungeon crawler, beautiful, like Saturday morning cartoons in the 80s sort of look to it. Uh, I'm sure anybody who enjoys the Jabroni Boys have seen them sort of get through this and play this. And, uh, you know, Andy picks the best character because Hawkins, that archer that you see, is, is the greatest character. Okay. Um, this and looks they, incredible. This is awesome. It's incredible, and they just did a huge update. One of the biggest things being that you are no longer picking up weapons and hoping for the best as enemies <laughs> drop things. Yeah. Um, so you're getting them in shrines uh, and doing different stats and stuff for your weapon instead of for you a lot of the time. Uh, and it's and they've changed the the difficulty a lot. They've made a difficulty level so that you're not constantly dying. So I actually got to the end, which is great. Um, yeah, and there's just a lot a lot to dig into. So I hope you guys get to do that soon. And for for context, Greggy, this was the game. I think the Jabroni Boys did stream at one point. Oh. Where Kevin was trying to get through lines of fire and he couldn't figure out the timing. <laughs> right. For them. Yeah. And okay. he said it was a oh. difficult pattern, but it was literally just an on and off. And Andy uh, definitely uh, freaked out a big one. I remember that, that now. One. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Another big thing that might be new to a lot of people is that the, it's controller supported now. Oh, great. So you don't have to play it on your. Uh, so I can just keep waiting. Keyboard. This will be, be, be on PlayStation in no time. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Don't worry about it. These indie games, they usually get ported over just like that. Mm -hmm. And speaking of little indie games, let's talk about the fact that Final Fantasy 16 spoilers are out in the wild. Xbox doesn't believe in VR for now and so much more because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday across a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show by writing in for free at kindoffunny.com slash KFGD with your questions, thoughts, and opinions about the news, and of course, your squad up requests. Then, watch us record the show live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames and youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames. If you're watching live, just like N. Johnson 5513 is and Ace Boogie Games are, well, you have a special job. Go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames and listening on podcast services around the globe no matter where you get the show please support us by of course rating reviewing sharing all the different shows if you're watching on youtube subscribe there if you're listening on spotify right there and if you're not doing the other thing go do the other thing just for once go to apple Podcasts. what's happening over there nobody knows of course 
You can support us by using the Epic Creator Code, kind of funny at checkout on the Epic Game Store, or when you're playing Fortnite, Rocket League, etc. on your PlayStation, Xbox, or Switch. However, the best way to support us, just like the best way to support the Indie Informer, is to go to patreon.com slash kind of funny. Over on patreon.com slash kind of funny, you can get each and every episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily ad-free, just like each and every other podcast we post. You can watch us record the show live before anybody else gets it. The other one's not this one because this one's live and it's daily news. And then, of course, you can get a bevy of bonus content like all sorts of kind of feuds and Greg ways and you name it. If you gave us 10 bucks right now, you'd get more than 250 episodes of content never released to the public. But I digress. Let's get some housekeeping for you. A new episode of The Blessing Show is premiering tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific, right after Kind of Funny Games Daily. And it's all about what's up with PlayStation's multiplayer strategy. It's the season finale wrapping up this year's episodes. So tune in at 11 a.m. on the dot for a jam-packed episode. Of course, you supported us on Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny in January, when we, or no, October actually, right, when we did uh, uh, the launch of The Spare Bedroom, and that got you this full season. So thank you for your support. Hard to believe it's over, but so much more stuff promised you on that thermometer, and it's coming through. This is going to be a banger episode. You need to check it out. And it's required reading, of course, I guess viewing, for PS I Love You this week, so get over there. Uh, we also, if you didn't remember, have a brand new store, ladies and gentlemen, with brand new merch. But guess what that means? It means we have an old store full of old merch we got to get rid of. And so right now, we have a deal of the week. You can get 20% off your order from our Rooster Teeth store. Uh, and you can go over with the code Jabroni. That's right, Jabroni. G J A B R O N I. You can go to store.roosterteeth.com and go on over to the kind of funny uh, tab there to get in there. And then you use that and sunset this store. Sunset this store so I don't get boxes of thousands of t-shirts that Mike has to try to sell on the streets, please. Uh, over on Patreon, of course, you can watch us record the new Kind of Funny podcast this afternoon and get a 15-minute Greg way today that I haven't recorded yet, so please tweet me questions so I can answer <laughs> some stuff and know what I'm talking about. Uh, thank you to our Patreon producers, uh, Casey, Andrew, Delaney, Twining, and James Hastings. They were brought to you by BetterHelp, but we'll tell you about that later for now. Let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. Time for some news. Seven items on the Roper Report. A baker's dozen. Jill, how excited for Final Fantasy 16 are you? Not very. Okay, well, that, that didn't work. But if you were excited, you should be careful. Number one on the Roper Report, of course, beware. Final Fantasy 16 spoilers are out there because early copies of the game are out there. This is Andy Robinson over at VGC. Square Enix has a knowledge that copies of Final Fantasy 16 have made their way into public hands ahead of its release and said it will target pre-release media and streams. Ahead of the game's June 22nd release date, physical copies of Final Fantasy 16 made their way into public hands this week, according to several social media users who started posting images and details of the game. This has led Square uh, to putting a spoiler warning on its social media ch channels and asking all users who managed to get the game early to not share media or story details. The post reads, We're aware that a small number of physical copies of Final Fantasy 16 are being circulated. We are in the process of a thorough investigation into illegitimate acquisitions and are acting to limit this head of the official launch of the game on June 22nd. For those who receive a copy ahead of launch, we kindly ask that you do not share any aspect of the game, including screenshots, videos, and live streams, until after Final Fantasy 16 has officially launched. Our priority is to ensure that the full game experience is not spoiled for our fans, and to do what and to do that, we will take down any images, videos, streams published ahead of the launch day. We ask for your assistance and cooperation in the final week ahead of launch. End quote. Final Fantasy 16 will be released on PlayStation 5 on June 22nd. A playable demo for the game was released on the PlayStation Store earlier this week. During a pre-release live, I just love this. During a pre-release live stream on Saturday, the game's development team confirmed it will release a day one patch for Final Fantasy 16, despite previously stating it would not need mm. to do so. <laughs> the update will fix progression and crash issues, as well as making performance improvements in different parts of the game. The development team has also listened to feedback regarding motion blur and will add the ability to turn it off in a future update, as well as the ability to adjust camera movement. Jill. Greg. You're not interested in Final Fantasy 16. I'm not not interested. You're not not interested. Okay. I mean, this is probably of all the Final Fantasies one that's that's targeted to me. It's got a nice... Uh, Game of Thrones? Yeah, got yeah. a nice Game of Thrones pool in there. It's got big monsters. Summons, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and a lot of people that I enjoy a lot are really excited for the game. Um, 
I hate, like, even if I'm not huge into a game, I hate seeing this sort of thing mm. happen. Of course, yeah. It's always such a, a, a bummer and a backbreaker because you think immediately to the development team and the writers who put all this stuff and crafted this thing, and you want that big launch moment. You want it to be out in the world, and, and then you get here, and you're like, ah, oh, crap. Okay, well, don't do that. Don't look there, and blah, 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 blah. It is an interesting one of, I appreciate them being like, yo, don't stream it or don't do this stuff. It'll be interesting to see how much they really try to crack down on people because, again, I don't fault the consumer. They talk about illegitimate things. Well, it's like, it's, I assume the mom and pop shop that's just putting it out or yeah. you know, a Walmart that screwed up and put it out and you got it. Once you have it, I, I feel bad for doing the takedowns on the kids who are yeah. just putting their stuff up because everybody wants to get out there and be a streamer and do whatever. But like, also, it's a huge game, right? I assume this is going to be dozens and dozens of hours. I don't know how many spoilers inside would work because even for me, somebody who started the game in the demo, right, that's out right now, it's like, okay, cool, I get it. But I, like, you could, I, I know Clive. Because, uh -huh. of course, Clive came through and we talked to him like, uh-huh. Uh. And there's a couple other character names. I know, But if you were to go, well, 30 hours in, Tifa St. John comes over and like, <laughs> I don't know who that is and what happens. And I'm not looking at it. I have time to get out of the screenshot. Mm -hmm. but yeah, I'm, I, I'm more excited for it than you are, but I am definitively not the Final Fantasy guy, which yeah. is why it's impressive that playing the demo, I was like, okay, like all the talk in the lead up to this, all the previews, whether it was Michael Heim on Gamescast or Tim on Gamescast, Talking about the combat of it and then the fact that it's going to be this more fantasy and it's going to try to be like not adult, but you know, like more yeah. grittier. Story <laughs> Playing through what I played, I was like, you know what? I am interested in this, but this is a game I have to be in the mood for. Yeah. And I don't know if that mood will last the 30 hours, 40 hours, 50 hours, 60 hours, whatever it's going to be, right? I haven't looked into how long the game is. And so that's a weird one for me of like, even Game of Thrones, I enjoyed here and there, but I wasn't like weekly destination viewing for me personally because I'm just not that guy. I so was though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so then what's the, what is stopping you here? What is making you go, this isn't 100% mine? Uh, I think a big part of it is, is just, like you said, the time sink. Yeah. I do not have that kind of time. That's why we love indies. <laughs> yeah, that's why we love oh, indies. Oh, I, I, I got a great experience I don't in have an enough, hour? I don't have enough time to play the indies that I want to play. Yeah. Like, I am catching up from Summer Game Fest because I was there the whole week. And, yeah. And I can't be there and cover things. Yeah. So I'm like, I just got... um an impressions piece up on fall of porcupine which came out last week and this is a game that everybody keeps i look at and it's like oh it's night in the woods inspired and you're a doctor but you're a pigeon and, and i'm like <laughs> yeah. this sounds like something i'd like this seems like a greg game is that, it a greg game it does seem like a greg ass okay. game i'm not gonna lie okay good 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 good, good. <laughs> i'm looking forward to that one then too then yeah yeah and that's the thing so a quick question then for you do you find your – is it a rare AAA game that gets you or is it that you, you're always looking at indies and then are you always looking at indies both because you enjoy it, of course, but you turn your pattern then into this career. So now is it kind of like this cycle of like, well, I got to do this. I have to do that. I can't play dozens and dozens of hours of Final Fantasy because it would take me away from what the IndieInformer.com is. It's actually a strange uh, reversal from that. So when I was a Game Informer, I uh, tried to stick to indies as much as possible and it would be a sort of – difficulty professionally when i was not say interested in the next final fantasy but you kind of have to be aware of what's going on and now i'm i'm sort of unleashed <laughs> <laughs> so that i can just outright say oh, i'm not terribly interested and i might it's freeing right yeah it's freeing to be like yeah it's just not my jam i'm not mm -hmm. gonna play it not gonna do the thing yeah i think the the thing about turning your job or your, your hobby into your job happened a lot earlier in games journalism so now i'm just I mean, that thing where I'm constantly making content no matter what I'm doing, Yeah. Um, which is fun, but also hard uh, because you don't get to just sit back and, and have fun. And sometimes I do play uh, AAA games just for fun. So I think my big fun game of the year is going to be Tears of the Kingdom nice. because I'm not, I'm not covering that. I don't have to cover it. I don't have to think about it as content. I can just play it. So now double back because I want to know more about Fall of Porcupine. Okay. Because it's this idea of, to me, it sounds, when I heard the name, I was like, oh, it's like a kingdom falling or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, no, it's odd. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then it's out, but Is they put it? out a prequel. There's a free prequel. Or so it's like the demo was, a, it's, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> so it's out. Okay. Um, you can go and play it. Um, but in my uh, impressions piece, which you can see currently on the site, um, I do talk a little bit about the double meaning in the name, Fall okay. of Porcupine. There does seem to be a very uh, clever play because it is fall. It is a game that I would love to play as the leaves are turning color and the seasons are changing. Um, but there is a sort of, no matter how like endearing this 
particular art style looks, there is a little bit of looking inside and, and thinking about harder questions of uh, what we were talking about, like exhausting yourself for your passion, which happens to also be your job, and, and to what extent you allow yourself to burn out and what happens when you burn out and how you kind of handle all of it and do you give yourself some time to be... I love it's a pigeon. But it's, but it's a pigeon, yeah. <laughs> this it's is where fantastic. the Night the Woods comparisons come yes, in, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I mean, there is some of the, the fact that it's uh, because it's animals, but there is some DNA there as well. Sure. Uh, I don't think that this one will get quite as dark as Night in the Woods did, but, you know. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Okay. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that one. Uh, you know what, though? Xbox isn't looking to forward to VR anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Number two on the Roper Report. Uh, we're talking about, of course, Matt Booty still making his podcast slash interview rounds and talking about VR for Xbox. This is Tom Henderson at Insider Gaming, who breaks out a part of the Hollywood Reporter's reporting and says, speaking with the Hollywood Reporter, the head of Microsoft's Xbox Game Studios, Matt Booty, has spoken on Xbox's view of VR and AR. Quote, I think for us, it's just a bit of wait until there's an audience there. We're very fortunate that we have these big IPs that have turned into ongoing franchises with big communities, Booty said in his response to a question about his thoughts on VR and AR. Quote, we have 10 games that have achieved over 10 million players' life to date, which is a pretty big accomplishment. But that's the kind of scale that we need to see success for the game, and it's just, it's not quite there yet with AR, VR, end quote. Sony has already seen some success with its PlayStation VR 2, with Sony reporting that the headset is already outselling its predecessor, the PlayStation VR. Uh, analyst predictions, which originated from the research firm IDC, reported via Bloomberg, said low unit sales were because of rising costs of living, rising interest rates, and rising layoffs. In March, the firm suggested that PlayStation VR 2 sold around 270,000 units in the headset's first six weeks, with... Sony's own reporting stating the headset sold just shy of 600,000 in the same period. The reported figures put PlayStation VR 2 sales 8% more than the original PSVR in the same time period. Meanwhile, Apple uh, recently revealed its latest VR slash AR headset named the Apple Vision Pro. It's described as a device designed with gamers in mind. The Apple Vision Pro is entering the market, competing with MetaQuest's headsets, Sony PlayStation VR 2, Valve Index, and other options. Uh, when I saw this going around this morning, Jill, I saw the one and only Matt Piscatella. Of course, he's an analyst, but his official highfalutin title, uh, Executive Director and Video Game Industry Analyst at Circana, which was formerly NPD. Uh, he quote tweeted one of the reportings on this. I believe it might have been... VGC's article about this and not the this one, but same information. Quote tweeted and said this in response to uh, Matt Booty's stuff, and then it's a thread, right? Matt Booty is absolutely right. The market is also currently cratering, although it may rebound with a new Quest hardware. Maybe. Then, he, in his own thread, he put in this uh, uh, one reporting from NPD that was, quote, VR sales in 2023 have, sig have been significantly lower than last year, with unit sales declining by 70%. Let me try that again because I mumbled a lot of it. VR sales in 2023 have been significantly lower than last year with unit sales declining by 70%, end quote. Then back to the thread. If you like VR, that's awesome, and I say keep enjoying it. I ain't here to yuck anyone's yums. Astrobot Rescue Mission is on my personal top 10 favorite games of all time. But the market is what it is. Then he ends his thread. No one is yelling at me about, no one is yelling at me about this, and for some reason that makes me nervous because Matt knows how the VR community is. Yep. They, they are very protective of VR, or even when facts and figures are thrown in their face or whatever. Jill, where are you at right now with VR? Uh, so I have a PSVR 2. If you're the indie informer, you have to. Yeah. Because so many indies are doing stuff. I saw that you got to play Before Your Eyes. I did? Oh, my God. Yeah, adorable. Not adorable. I mean, like heartbreaking, but like <laughs> such a great visual and everything. It's We'll get to it. Sorry. Yeah. What are your thoughts on VR? <laughs> I want it to be what I want it to be so bad. Mm -hmm. um, I want PSVR to be that thing that you step in and you are experiencing a world and you are immersed in it and it is amazing and everything around you is, is really happening and I want it to be the dream, but it's not there. It's not there. The technology is not there. The games are not there. That's yeah. the biggest thing. Technology can be as good as it is, but if you've still got, uh, pick up this ball with this rock and... Throw it across, and it's like, okay, that's fun. If it's a tech demo. Everything seems like a tech demo. Yeah, then you're not going to have people clamoring to spend hundreds of dollars to go 
or thousands of dollars, depending on you know which one, uh, to go pick this the whole thing up that you can just play normal, quote unquote, traditional games. Yeah. Uh, and enjoy that experience. Um, I think the oh, what was the one the Horizon one recently? Uh, Call of the Mountain. Call of the Mountain. I I I was really close. I was like Call of the Wild. That's not quite right. I, it's understandable. <laughs> Horizon's got like these these nouns and adjectives in a bucket, and they just grab from it and put oh, it at the man. end. Uh, and that was fantastic, as much as it could have been. <laughs> yes, Jill. Yes, that's right. Yes, yes. Um. Yeah. So just like I mean, this bow and arrow mechanic feels great. Yeah, climbing feels great. Yeah. Why am I doing it? Yeah. Why do I? I've, I've done this for an hour or two or three, and it's like, all right, I'm, I'm fine. I don't need to do more. Right. And seeing giant creatures seeing actual monsters realizing what the scale is yeah. that's really what vr is good for i remember having vr uh for the skyrim port which made me really dizzy <laughs> um and just walking into a cave and seeing how large the cave was was a real like oh vr could be a huge thing yeah we're just not there and that's sad yeah, and of course, that's what Matt Booty's saying, of course, that the market isn't there. And that's what is worrisome about Matt saying this, right, as he reads the tea leaves and sees stuff. Of course, yeah, Matt, Quest 3 could change the game and do a whole bunch of different stuff. But for me, I'm right there with you. Is it, it is about software. It is about experiences. And I know I'm a broken record. And if you listen to the show, you've probably heard me talk about it a million times. It's just like, for me, it's awesome. VR is cool, but is it's just Dave & Buster's. It's just arcade games. It's I, yeah. you know, I got a text from a friend uh, this week who's like, hey, I just got this uh, check. I don't want to say too much because I don't want to give away who this person is. I got this check in the mail and like I didn't expect it. And so should I buy a PlayStation VR too? And I was like, no, like I can't. Re and I'm like, if you look at, go look at the library and if you can find a bunch of games, you're like, I need to play it. Awesome. I, I was like, the only thing I would tell you if you were to, hey, I just picked up, like, get before your eyes. Yeah. And then everything else I would say, like, Meh, whatever. Like you don't need to go do He's like, fine, whatever. And it's like, I don't like saying that. Right. I want to be excited for VR. I know that, as I started it, right, so many indies are making things in VR. And, uh, you know, I feel like you've seen it that they, maybe with PlayStation VR or Quest 1 or 2, you know, you get into that space because, hey, here's, we're, we're going to publish this game. Here's money for you guys to make this thing. You start working on that skill set and those talents. And, like, you are, people are learning and making those, you know, choices that were, as she used to talk about it, PlayStation 1 stuff, right, that you hope that you iterate on the next one. But, as we have seen developers who made a lot of great VR stuff leave the space, yeah. go, go to more traditional games, it is that idea of like, well, who is learning? And don't get me wrong, Meta has a whole bunch of st people doing st great stuff over there. You know, Zan Sanzaru is one of their teams. They're making uh, their sequel to their game. It's going to be great. It's going to be amazing, I'm sure. Uh, I, I sent, uh, Barrett, I sent you one, uh, a trailer over there, right? Uh, End Dreams is still chasing VR, and they're doing Synapse. That's the one th yeah. that we got. I saw at the trailer, and that was one that I know the PlayStation VR 2 audience is very much like, no, this is going to be the real deal. This is going to be it. And I'm going to try it. I'm going to play it. I'm gonna, I want to talk about PlayStation, uh, PS, I love you, XOXO. But again, it's just like, I don't know. What happens after this round of titles comes out? And it is like the stuff that's been announced. Like, is PlayStation going to continue to support? You know, it, 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 I, I really appreciate the uh, Tom uh, report here from Insider Gaming bringing up, of course, the fact that there was this thing from IDC, 270. Yeah, that's going to be the thing. And then PlayStation's like, no, it's almost 600,000, which is more than PlayStation VR. But it's like, okay. It, but is there that, uh, oof, you know what I mean? Like, I am everything in the world, I guess, in terms of video games, but I'm still the PlayStation guy, and I really don't feel there's a there's a conversation about PlayStation VR 2. Yeah, I don't feel that passion. I don't feel that enthusiasm. I love the idea that it's selling more. Maybe it's because yeah. people missed out on the first one, and they're like, oh, well, this is the, the new generation. I want to get in on it. It's going to be smoother. It's going to be more exciting for new developers. Uh, hopefully that's the case, and hopefully they continue to kind of this going yeah I, and that's the thing is i want to see where it could be you're talking about you know these games aren't what you want them to be yet yep. and i agree with you i want them to get there and i know that to get there you have to put in the work but and it's not even me saying you should stop putting in the work it's more the you look at this industry and the round and round of layoffs you know what i mean and you look at studio closures you look at where people are choosing to invest and i wholeheartedly full chest do not believe that PlayStation in five years is going to be like, we still need to be committed to PlayStation VR. 
I think you'll see that follow. I'm not even convinced in five years you'll see him talking about live service games anymore yeah. <laughs> and their whole multiplayer push. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Greg canceled VR. Yeah, exactly. And, I, and then why the, would you do then that? Then it'll be the thing. Gamers, it'll Greg? be su- they'll put out like three great games and it'll be successful. I'll be like, you fuck you, Greg. See what else? I'm like, that's not what I said. That's not what I said. That's exactly what he said. Don't I want it lie. to be great. Got a game to play for PlayStation VR today for review. It doesn't matter. It's on the tape. You hate it, but Roll you're going to play games on it? <laughs> I thought you hated it. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I know the majority of you aren't like that because I know so many of you go to patreon.com slash kind of funny. Over on patreon.com slash kind of funny, of course, you can get each and every episode of kind of funny games daily ad free. You can watch us record every podcast other than this one, pretty much uh, live as we record it ad free a day early, like the kind of funny podcast this afternoon. Of course you get a bevy of bonus episodes like kind of feudy, uh, the Greg way show, uh, the next gen podcast, you name it. It's all over there. And of course, most importantly, like I said, ad free viewing of kind of funny games daily, but since you're not on patreon.com slash kind of funny, here's a word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. It's so easy to get caught up in what everyone else needs from you and never take a moment to think about what you need from yourself. I know this from experience, how often it just seems easier to care about others and to keep it moving. But when we spend all of our time giving, it can leave us feeling stretched thin and burnt out. Therapy can give you the tools to find more balance in your life so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. Some of my very best friends use BetterHelp and love how helpful it can be for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash kind of funny today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash kind of funny. Number three on the Roper Report, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, The PlayStation 3 exclusive Metal Gear Solid 4 was once running beautifully on Xbox 360. This is Chris going in at VGC. At one point during its development, Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots was quote unquote running beautifully and smoothly on Xbox 360. That's according to the game's assistant producer, friend of the show, Ryan Payton, of course from Camouflage, you know, Iron Man, all that jazz, who shares the revolution, er, the revelation, I'm sorry, in Stephen L. Kent's book, The Ultimate History of Video Games, Volume 2, in an interview for the book. Peyton claims that there was no exclusivity deal to ensure the game was only released on PS3 and that the decision instead came down to the choice of disc format used in Microsoft's console. Peyton says at one point, Konami set up a team dedicated to seeing if the game could be ported to the Xbox 360. Uh, quote, despite, the down, despite how down, downtrodden my colleagues were with developing on PS3, most of them were still hardcore Sony fanboys and were not in favor of sen- spending resources on such a test, he explains in the book. They believed Metal Gear Solid 4 would look and run terribly on Microsoft's older and inferior hardware. One fateful day, the Konami R&D team hosted a meeting where we got to see the fruits of their labor. Metal Gear Solid 4 running beautifully and smoothly on Xbox 360, end quote. According to Peyton, although the port was possible on a technical level, it wasn't practical on a physical level. Because PS3 games came on BD-ROM discs that could hold up to 54 gigabytes of storage, and the Xbox 360 games came on DVD-ROM discs that could only hold up to 8.3 gigabytes, bringing Metal Gear Solid 4 to Xbox 360 would have required putting the game on numerous discs, something Konami wasn't willing to do. This is backed up at the time by Sony's Jack Trenton, Jackie T, who once stated, quote, Metal Gear Solid 4 is not only exclusive on PS3, it's only possible on PS3, thanks in part to Blu-ray. Konami announced last month the remake of Metal Gear Solid 3 titled Metal Gear Solid Triangle. I'm always going to say Triangle. I'm Snake Eater. Uh, It will release PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S and PC. It will also be releasing with the Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Series Volume 1, which will contain Metal Gear Solid 1 through 3, as well as the original Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2. Metal Gear Solid 4 has never been re-released on any other format, meaning it remains a PS3 exclusive to this day. It remains to be seen if Volume 2 of the Metal Gear Master Collection series will contain a port of the game. And it was also recently taken off of uh, PlayStation Plus when they like redid all the yeah. PlayStation Plus Plus and all that stuff. So you gotta get it now. Were you ever a Metal Gear person? I, I feel like I probably should be. Yeah. 
Um, I, I love Metal Gear. You know that, but I love it. <laughs> I saw this trailer, and it was maybe one of the most ridiculous up until the big reveal. And then there's a thing that ate another thing. Yeah. It was, it was, the food chain. Oh, it was Put fantastic. Put snakes at the top of it. Don't and I was worry. like, okay. And I'm never, like you, I'm never calling it anything but triangle. Yeah. Yeah, it was Delta business. <laughs> Put a D there. You know what I mean? It's a triangle. 100%. Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, of course, you know, a fun, interesting one to look back. It's nice to see Ryan spilling all his Metal Gear secrets from working on that. Uh, it'll be, I'm, for me personally, the discussion point is the Master Collection which is what I popped for. They showed the Delta trailer, and I was like, whatever, whatever. And then their Metal Gear Collection, Volume 1. Yes. That's what I flipped out about. Because, yeah, I would love a Volume 2 that is... I would love comprehensively, here's the Metal Gear Solid, the entire collection on whatever platform. However of, many discs they need to put it on. Well, that's, that's done now. We got digital. <laughs> now. I'll be downloading things left and right. I'll be all for part of it. I'll be ready for it. Now... Speaking of downloading things, Greg Way, number six on the Roper Report, the Lies of P demo is a huge hit. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Louise Joshua Gutierrez at GameSpot who reports, as of late, many people have taken an interest in Meow Wiz is uh, Souls-like game Lies of P. Uh, the demo has surpassed over a million downloads in the last three days. Since the announcement of a playable demo was released, uh, the experience of playing the game has received mostly positive reviews. It currently has a 4.3 out of 5 on the Xbox Store and earned a top spot on Steam's top 100 most played games. In addition, Lies of P has reached over 170,000 views on Twitch and is now one of the top 10 pre-ordered games on PlayStation. In a press release, the, pro the project director had this to say about the demo's positive feedback. Quote, the Lies of P team has been working hard to deliver a demo experience that meets your expectations, and it's been gratifying seeing this positive response. We're looking forward to continued feedback as you play through the demo again, so please keep them coming, and we'll release the very best Lies of P experience possible on September 19th, end quote. Jill, have you touched this demo? I have absolutely touched this demo. Yeah? Not, well, I haven't played it. It's on Steam Next Fest, too, part of that. Uh, they want to keep it on those charts. Bringing it back. Uh, but I, I did get to play it a little bit at GDC at Xbox's event. Yeah. Um, and I got to play for seconds before I got murdered, and I loved it. <laughs> Are you a Souls person? I'm a Souls person. Ah, I okay, am, okay. So then how did this one feel compared to that? It felt very, it felt very similar. Yeah. Uh, I think the big thing for me is going to be what all of the narrative elements are. What's Geppetto up to? Yeah. What's going on with all of this? You know, is my nose going to grow? What's up? Yep, exactly. Big part of it. Big part of it. <laughs> uh, of course, Andy Cortez, the Nitro Rifle, uh, a big Soulsborne player. Uh, what I heard him talking around the office about was that this is like the one that feels the mo of all the Souls like. This is the one that feels the most like a uh, from game. But Barrett Courtney, I know you invested many an hour into the lies of P demo. Where, where's your head at, at with it? Uh, yeah, I'm really into it. Uh, granted, I'm not the biggest Souls person uh, like an Andy or uh, a Blessing or even a Jill here. Um, tried Bloodborne for a couple hours because this one feels the most like Bloodborne out of all the other uh, Souls games. Uh, really appreciate what Bloodborne uh, was doing. Uh, there was some other, there was some like... Um, item management stuff that I didn't love, so I dropped off. Uh, and this stuff doesn't seem to be as hardcore with that kind of stuff, and I was really into it. I'm really into the world. Uh, it does seem like the the story, maybe while well, not as in-depth with, like, lore like uh, other Souls games, like, there's something there that I'm just, like, really interested in uh, with the kind of, like, steampunky vibe going on sure. here. Um, but, yeah, I, I put it, like, three hours in, really enjoyed it. Never beat the the demo that's available uh, publicly right now uh, because at one point I did hit the, well, this isn't going to carry over to a, the, the full game. Like, I, 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 I've played enough to know that I'm in, but, yeah, I'm, I've, I've seen enough at, at this point to know that I'm going to play it day one. Huh. All right. Good to know. I haven't touched it. I, I mean, like, there's a whole different conversation here, but I, I haven't touched it. I want to because, again, like, it's not the gameplay of Souls games that I don't like usually. It's usually the setting. And this one, even though I don't look at it and go, that's a world I want to be in, I'm more interested in, like, it looks like it's got, for me, a better personality than mm -hmm. what I would want out of an Elden Ring or something like that. So I'm interested to try and see what's up, but I still don't strike. I, I don't know. How is their storytelling, Jill? Does yeah. it seem like they're, they're doing, is it better than I'm going to have to watch some guy on YouTube talk I for an hour? I legitimately cannot tell you. I just got to run through and hit things and, and get murdered, like I said. See, this so. is why I play the games about my mental health. You know what I mean? Yeah. Story there. I get to be <laughs> a pigeon. I get to find out what's going on. It seems to, to be about. a little bit straightforward. If, you're, if you understand Pinocchio lore. lore. Like uh, everyone like you're should. Gonna, you're going to get the gist of this. Okay. Or like I could not tell you like 
more than maybe a minute worth of like Elden Ring lore, but sure. you know, like but Pinocchio, you could go on for Pino- an hour. Pinocchio, I could go on for hours, and uh, the, the, what I played in the demo, it seems a bit more straightforward for you, Greg. Okay, and then what I, the track to jump on? What a time to be! I'm so glad demos are back. Yeah, you know what I mean. We're talking about Liza P. We just talked about Final Fantasy 16. We're talking about Steam Next Fest and all yeah. these awesome games to go play. Which is, I'm cheating a bit, but. Hell yeah. Like, I love the ability that I, I miss those days when it was everything had a demo and you could get in and actually play it and see. 100%. It's a little hard because uh, you guys were talking on Friday how you were happy to have a weekend and you everything had been go, go, go. Yeah. It's a little hard when you have a big event right after a big event. Yeah. And this is another big indie event, so I'm still go, 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 go. <laughs> so, yeah, what does is, what is your day look like? You finish uh, with us. You're going to head back and you're just going to play all these I'm just going to play so many games. Are you streaming them all or you, do you not stream or how's that work? Uh, I started streaming as part of my Patreon. And okay. it's going to be up to my uh, patrons what I play next. I put that up on Friday okay. and we'll see what happens. Okay, great. And then for you <laughs> with IndieInformer, theindieinformer.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, can't it, forget I, the the very much. I don't want to forget the the. I want to make sure to get there. I want to make sure they don't end up somewhere wrong. You know what I mean? Uh, having to listen to Amron Khan or something. Nobody wants that. Uh, for the, Are you trying to turn these previews as fast as possible? Are you trying to do one a day? How are you seeding your content? Um, a big part of the way I want to manage the Indian Former is to be a place that is human friendly. Yeah. <laughs> so to, so if I am able to get through things and it's the work day and I've had breaks and I've been eating, then that's that's what I do. However many I can get through. Okay. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, I'm going to put my controller down. I'm going to go pet my cats. I'm going to go hang out with my husband. You know. Fantastic. Like, uh, so I will try to get as many demos as possible. I try to preview a lot of them. Sometimes I do roundups for these are the ones you definitely need to go see. Um, it really depends on what fits into into that schedule because uh, I want to be the change I want to see in the world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, number five on the Roper Report. And yes, I just read story number six. I don't know how they got out order. Get off my back. Uh, we're talking about gaming, going to the movies. I got two stories about uh, video game adaptations for you. We'll start over at Games Radar, where Hiram Cryer writes uh, about Kojima in Death Stranding. Hideo Kojima is involved with the Death Stranding movie, but he won't be the one directing the adaptation. Uh, it's a day ending with Y, which means Hideo Kojima has been tweeting up a storm. Yesterday, on June 18th, Kojima saw fit to clarify a misunderstanding about the upcoming Death Stranding movie. He's quote-unquote deeply involved with the new project, but he isn't actually directing the movie. Instead, Kojima seems to be taking on a more supervisory role, attending, the, attending to the production, plotting, look, and design of the Death Stranding movie. All of these focuses, honestly, make Kojima's role on the movie adaptation sound pretty similar to his role in making the actual game, albeit without direction. So far, we know precious little about the upcoming Death Stranding movie. It was previously reported that the movie would add new characters that weren't in the games, and it was then revealed that the Death Stranding movie could ditch the game's characters completely. Maybe it's better not to expect Norman Reedus and Guillermo del Toro to show up in the film. I completely forgot there was a Death Stranding <laughs> movie. Kojima tweeted this, and I was like, oh, man, it's news out of Tribeca, because they did his documentary premiere there and all these yeah. different things, and him and Jeff were going around having great meals. That look like it. Nobody was telling me if The Flash was good. I don't care. Uh, but it was this idea of like, oh, right, I guess they announced I don't even remember them announcing a Death Stranding movie. I vaguely remember it, and I'm, I, I sort of remember Norman Reedus being announced, but I think that's probably just was an assumption on my part. Yeah, of course, because he's uh, a movie star, right? <laughs> he obviously would be the choice to be the main character. Um, I am I'm loving Kojima right now. He's having a great he's free time. Out there. He's out there. He's like taking pictures. He's doing wild things. He's like, uh, I don't have to direct this movie. <laughs> 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 kind of funny.com, you're, slash you're wrong, because I'm not going to Google it or whatever. Tell me, when can I watch the Kojima documentary? Again, it premiered over at uh, Tribeca. Mm-hmm. I'd like to watch it. When can I do that? On demand. I don't want to go to theater. Never. Ever? He'll it was come like in. one day. They burned the, yeah. the negative after it. Anyone who sees it, he'll just tackle. Look at him. He's just vibing. He's partying with Heartmate. He's here. having no such a deal. good time with his life, you know? He's That's just, where I want to be. Exactly. What a, what a nice young man. What a Let's, nice clown out there. What, what are we doing fun. here? Let's just go out and vibe, you know? Let's just catch up to him. Maybe still in New York. We can hang out there. <laughs> uh, let's jump from... PlayStation's Death Stranding to PlayStation's Ghost of Tsushima. We have an update on Ghost Love of it. Tsushima. Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, Ryan Dinsdale at IGN says John Wick Chapter Four Director Chad Stalowski. 
Stalesky, well, Stalski, Stal Stalski, uh, has given an update on the Ghost of Tsushima film, saying uh, the team is looking for ways to expand it beyond a single movie into sequels and TV spinoffs. Speaking of comicbook.com, uh, Chad discussed how uh, you transfer the story to a, of a video game that's dozens of hours long into a film and teased that Sony is perhaps thinking about more than a single bout on the silver screen. Quote, it's just, how do I unpack that much information into a feature that can go on to other features or a TV project or a platform for that? Uh, he asked. The trick is not, do we have great material? We know we have great material. It's how to make it palpable in any platform. You know, how do we make a great two, two and a half hour movie out of this? How do we make it satisfying and leave it open to expand further from there? That's the real challenge. How to take so much great and get it down to a watchable level. Uh, Sony Pictures and PlayStation Productions announced the Ghost of Tsushima film in March 2021, and Chad said it's now, quote, heavy in development, end quote. He continued, I love the property. Look, the game story of Jin Sakai and it being uh, what I would say is the most anti-samurai samurai movie out there because of the storylines, thematics in it, and the journey that Jin Sakai goes through. Uh, Jin's transformation from an honorable samurai to disgraced Ghost of Tsushima, uh, balancing his own pride with the survival of his people is, quote-unquote, so interesting, Chad said. Uh, quote, the, direct, the characters uh, in the story are definitely something I don't want to lose in any way. Uh, it's just the visuals I want to keep. The story and the characters are definitely something I don't want to lose in any way, he continued, though he added, it's just the visuals I want to keep. Oh, okay. Uh, Chad said previously he wants the film to be, uh, the film just right. He, Chad said previously he wants to do the film just right and have the cast and even the language be Japanese, something Sony is, quote unquote, so on board with, end quote. Lots to unpack here. Because this is one of those projects, why did we announce it so early? And I know movies work differently than video games, but you're heavily in development. All right, well, they got nothing to say. Yeah. And then uh, they're still on board with it. Let's see if they're on board with it. When this movie launches, is it going to be in Japanese? I think that would be awesome. Okay. I think that would be super fucking cool. But is it really, is the PlayStation production going to take that swing, Joe? No. No? No, they're not. Not going to do that. Huh? But I would love it. I would love that too. They make it so that you enter the theater and you can pick up the glasses to put it in like the old school movie oh, like vision the, of the, the game. Yeah, damn. Yeah. What was that <laughs> called? Uh, the filter. Crap. I yeah. know what you're talking about though, yeah. Kurt. Kurosawa. 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 Yeah, yeah. That was a great addition yeah. to the game or whatever. My teachers in school are going to be very upset with me for not For missing that. that. Yeah, I understand. Sorry, friends. It's fine. You know. Uh... Well, the other thing about this, though, is then the, the ways to expand it beyond a single movie into a series of sequels and TV spinoffs. That's another one where I'm like, Ugh. Like, I think for the most part, games translate better in the TV space. So yeah. I would have sort of loved this to be an HBO thing instead of a movie. But we'll see. Maybe, maybe they'll transfer that over. Maybe they'll decide that a movie isn't the way to do it. I don't know what heavy in production means. Maybe... They're too far. Not even in production, right? It's heavy in development. Oh, in development. Which also sounds like just vaporware that nothing's really yeah, happening nothing, yet with this movie. Yeah. You don't have to worry about yeah, it. Yeah, right? they weren't ready for the gaming audience and how excited they were going to be about their IP showing up somewhere. So they were like, oh, uh, normally we would announce this and no one would care. <laughs> 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 but no, I am really looking forward to this. I love Ghost of Tsushima. I, I love Legends. Hope that comes back uh, in a fun way. I... I don't ever really have faith in, in any of these adaptations. Yeah. Um, but this seems like a, a really good movie story. I feel, and I, that's my thing where I, I usually I'm like, oh yeah, you know, all this stuff happens in a video game. Like it's going to be hard. I feel like Jin Sakai's story could be just a, a pretty, I feel like there's a lot of great beats in it that you could put into a film and have it be a two hour long movie, a two mm -hmm. and a half hour long movie and not feel, but you could break it and do whatever and break it into two parts. I guess then the story, if, if they make the int the world interesting enough, like, I love Lady Masako so much in yeah. Ghost, right? So if it was that we're going to spin her off or have, you know, Ghost of Tsushima Legends, the TV show that is telling you all the side characters that Jin came into and what they did, that could be awesome too. Like, I, I'd be happy to eat my words because I do love Ghost. Uh, I'd, I've never seen the John Wick, but I hear they're great and people love them. So this yeah. director should know what he's doing, but we'll have to wait and see on that one. What you don't have to wait and see on, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> are the winners of the most anticipated awards from SGF. That's Summer Game Fest. I don't know why I'm dying now. Uh, anyways, on Friday before we uh, ended the day, uh, Jeff Keighley hit up and said, hey, today we're excited to share the 15 playable games deemed quote-unquote most anticipated at Summer Game Fest as judged by more than 40 global media outlets that voted on our Game Critics Awards Best of SGF. <coughs> we were one of them. 
We're happy to be there. We were happy to vote. Uh, continuing back with Jeff, though. Alan Wake 2 from Remedy and Epic Games Publishing was selected as the singular most anticipated title, while Cocoon from Geometric Interactive and Annapurna Interactive was the most anticipated indie title. Because it deserved to be. We're going to get back to that. <laughs> Here's the 15 most anticipated playable games at Summer Game Fest. This is alphabetical and not ranked. Uh, Alan Wake 2, Armored Core uh, 6, Fires of the Rubicon, Cocoon, uh, Cyberpunk 2077, Phantom Liberty, Disney Illusion Island, Foam Stars, Liz, Liz, Liz Funga, The Time Shift Warrior, Immortals of Avium, Mortal Kombat 1, Oxenfree 2, uh, Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, Remnant 2, Sandland, Sonic Superstars, and Viewfinder. A lot of great indies on that yeah, list. Yes, a lot of very, very good ones. I played Cocoon and felt very dumb. But I, I eventually <laughs> got into, I mean, I was able to advance the demo and do the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But I was at one point, I could hear Greg Rice behind me going, ah, oh, he's so close. And he, oh, that's no. the worst thing you want to hear when you're like that's failing terrible. at a demo. You're like, oh man, I, I just want to beat this guy, but he keeps one-shotting me. Personally, I think Viewfinder is what I, we, I think is what kind of funny voted for. No shade to Cocoon, no. but Viewfinder caught us also off guard. Demo available now. I think it's tough because Viewfinder uh, appeared, uh, I guess it was my first appearance with it, um, at GDC. So uh -uh. a lot of, I think, people's attention went to it during, like, the March uh, showcase time period. So during summer, you want to kind of stick to the, oh, and there's a, a lovely video of it. It is, in case you don't know what Viewfinder is, it is this absolutely mind-boggling, no idea how they made it work, uh, game where you are playing with reality, you're taking pictures, and the pictures become real, and you can go into them and... Uh, solve puzzles and get through things and, and collect things by taking pictures of things. And then it, it just goes like you start off and you think, okay, I understand what's happening. And then it just ramps up and up and up and the whole world is. Can't wait. Yeah. Great demo. And as a dropkick Tondo in the chat says another amazing demo. It is the year of demos as well. Yes. A hundred percent. That is out for steam next fest. Everyone should go play that. Uh, but I you loved cocoon. I loved cocoon. Okay. Uh, and I think if it had been a situation where both of them had dropped at the same time, it would have been difficult. Yeah. Um, but because Cocoon, this is the first time sort of seeing any hint of it. Yeah. I was actually uh, at Game Informer covering uh, the showcase where Cocoon was revealed. <coughs> so I got a really good, like, introduction to it. It wasn't, like, it, it didn't look like my thing. Yeah. You know, it's it's it's... Bugs. I'm not really big into <laughs> bugs. I'm not a bug person. Like it's a, it's got hard sci-fi elements, and I'm not usually a big sci-fi person. Uh, but I got into this game, and it was just one of those games that lets the player be and trusts you to that extent of you're just going to explore and you're going to figure it out, and we trust you to do it. Like I I feel so bad that you had that experience. It was just that boss fight you. at the end. At one point, something. It doesn't matter. I was just struggling with it. The the Getting, it, I really like this. You can see in the demo if you're watching right now, right? Like using these different orbs to go into different worlds, and then being like, "Oh, well, I can bring this power out of this world into the next world." Oh, and that's I'd kind of the addition to it. Yeah. And it just continues to build your abilities in a way that's like I didn't know that that existed until I saw it, and now I know it exists, yeah. and I, I can go do it. It's one of those uh, amazing games that there's no there's no prompts. I was really surprised to find there's no prompts. There's nothing telling you where to go. There's nothing telling you what to do. It is just about you exploring the world. And I love that kind of game. For anybody who knows my love of Tunic, I should nice. not be surprised. <laughs> well, Jill. Yes. Cocoon isn't out yet. It's not. It's coming soon. But soon so far away. Yep. If I wanted something more immediate, say what came to the mom and grop shops, where would I go? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform is listed by the Kind of Funny Games show hosts each and every weekday. Yeah. <laughs> Out today, Yakuza 0 through 6 are all available on good old games. That's GOG.com. Uh, Steam Next Fest is happening right now. So as we said, there's a bunch of different demos out. And while we've been live, I've been getting more press releases about more of the games that are in Steam Next Fest having release dates. So make sure you're checking out and seeing what's going on over there. And then Lightning is on early access PC. New dates for you. Final Transmission has been announced for the Callisto Protocol. This is the new DLC and the final chapter of the story. Uh, it's launching June 27th on PlayStation, followed by other platforms on June 29th. Uh, Testament, the Order of the High Human. And I'm sorry. Testament, the Order of High Human. Hit Steam Next Fest today. Like I was talking about, it launches July 13th. 
Paleo Pines has a Steam Next to Best demo. Uh, this is coming September 26th to PC, all the PlayStations, all the Xboxes, and Nintendo Switch. Uh, Mr. Run and Jump is also doing stuff today at the old uh, Steam Next Fest that's coming out July 25th. And then Let's School will officially launch on Steam on July 27th. We ask you, the folks watching or listening, uh, to go to Kind of Funny dot com slash kfgd to be part of the show with your questions comments and squad up requests today we have a squad up from polish dova kin who needs help on xbox and says today is my birthday i'm so happy i get to share it with the fa- my favorite podcast kfgd so i'm looking hold on one second hold on one second one second one second, one second. right uh hey everybody it's june 19th this is kind of funny games daily's uh, anniversary <laughs> I put out so that's what what we started the show in uh, seventeen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's six years. Six years, everybody. Yeah. Six year anniversary, kind of funny games day. I forgot about that. I put it's on the calendar. I had put it on the calendar years ago, and then kind of forgot. I, there's so much on the calendar these days. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, whatever. I digress. I don't know. Uh, happy to share my birthday with kind of funny games daily. So I'm looking for a KFBF to join me in Diablo Four. Uh, we, oh, do to play Diablo Four with me? Add my Blizzard tag, which is Polish Dova K number sign one seven seven two. That's P O L I S H D O V A H K number sign one seven seven two. Happy birthday to us, and happy birthday to you, Polish Dova Kim. Uh, Jill, we ask people watching live on Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games and YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games to go. To kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and listening on podcast services around the globe. We crushed it. Perfect game. Absolutely. Not, not one. Except I do see someone in chat saying that you didn't say hashtag or pound. You said the number symbol. Yeah. We're going to count that? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. It's, it's still the number sign. Is it, am I wrong? I mean, I don't care what Kylie Minogue on TikTok's calling it, all right? Number sign. (laughs) (sighs) This chat makes me so angry. I love you, chat. Keep the chaos going. You can take this energy to her show. I want to see fire in there. Come on. Fire. (laughs) <laughs> ladies and gentlemen it's a brand new week of kind of funny games daily each and every weekday we're here with this show of course uh your host look like this tomorrow it's blessing and jerica hannah from jk games wednesday it'll be me and jerica thursday it's gonna be blessing and tim friday it is tim and blessing uh of course if you're watching live right now on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games or youtube.com slash kind of funny games we're about to roll into the Post show that is exclusive to YouTube and Twitch. Of course, you can watch it later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games. And he's going to come out, ask us chats from the YouTube super chat. So if you have something to say to me or Jill, head on over to the YouTube super chat, chime in there with your question, and make some content with us before the boys or the Jabroni boys stream. What are you streaming today, Andy? More Tears of the Ooh. Kingdom. Are you singing again? Are you going to put that so freak show back on? <laughs> no. no, no singing. Okay, well, Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, remember, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every week, to a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. You like that? Be part of the show for free at kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. Of course, you can watch us live, twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames, youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames. Watch it later on YouTube. Uh, podcast services around the globe. No matter where you get it, please support us. Like, subscribe, share, leave reviews. Do all that stuff on the platforms you don't use all the time. Uh, remember, we have an Epic Games code. It's called Kind of Funny. When you're on the Epic Game Store or using Fortnite Rocket League on your consoles, you can put that in and help us earn some money without costing you any more. Jill, you were fantastic today. Thank you so much. Where can people keep up with you? Uh, if you're not checking out the Indianformer.com, you can find me personally on Twitter at Finrun, F-I-N-R-U-I-N. Uh, but if you want to follow the Indian Former, it does currently have a, a official account now, and that is at Indy underscore in, Informer. Yeah. Love it. You, fantastic work today, Jill. Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming on through. Thank you so much for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. <laughs> and here he comes, Andy Cortez. They say he comes out. It's post show time. That's what they say. You ever hear that? I hear it all the time. I heard yeah, it's like the groundhog thing. <laughs> is the show over or is there six more minutes? <laughs> no.
<laughs> it's over. Hey, everybody. Get your super chats in so we can ask some questions to our host, Greg and Jill. Good to see you again, Jill. Good How's it going? You. I'm ready to make you laugh with another very stupid joke. Oh, great. 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 Um, <laughs> while we're waiting for some super chats, Greg, I'd like to thank 26 months from AF Pod on Prime. Thank you, AF Pod. Liminal Faces. Subscribe for six months here on Twitch. CKY Cody. 52 months. Do the do the, -na 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 -na. CKY? Do the Cody song. Cody! There it is. <laughs> I thought you wanted me to do the CKY song. I don't know if I know it. Really? Were you not a jackass kid? I was. Well, I don't know what C I mean, I don't know, I don't know what CKY is. CKY was the band that had that song in every old jackass video. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It was like every, you know, you'd see like a kickflip and so, oh my! I hit, sure. I hit my nuts on a pole or some shit like yeah. that. You know, who put a pole here? Yeah, who put a pole Johnny here? Johnny Knoxville, why'd you put a pole here? <laughs> Drago, thank you for gifting out a subscription. Sad Ghost Boy, twenty three months over here on Twitch. Looks like the super chats are, are rolling in. And are you keeping up with the Pro Masters Valorant? This EG run is insane. And Tokyo Masters said, "Feel the surge" with a five dollar super chat. I am not. I'm. I also haven't been keeping up with uh, Overwatch League either. Because Dallas Fuel moved to the Atlantic Division, so they're playing against a lot of other Korean teams, like at three in the morning. Oh man, that's just you're, yeah, that's the middle of your day. That's I thought it would have been perfect for me. Trust me. <laughs> when this news came out, I was like, "Oh, that's beautiful." I'm awake at that time, and I just have not kept up with it. Hmm. Uh, Mike Townsro, hello, Mike, with a five dollars super chat says, "Crusted Jill, thank you for repping the indie scene." Thank you so much, Mike. Don't forget, they got another mini indie showcase coming up. They do. Submissions are open right now for 6180's mini indie showcase in August, I believe it is. Yes. I'll throw something together real quick. Yeah? In that unity. Boop, boop, beep, boop. They probably don't fact check. We could just lie. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> Demo. Mr. Logandi, nine months of support. Senny with 35 months of subscription on Prime. Soul Evo says, uh, here's 67 months of that free Amazon money. Thank you, Soul Evo. Uh, let's get another question here from... Xbox Expansion Pass. No real question. Just says, great episode. I'll take it. You know what I mean? I yeah. thought Jill did a great job. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I thought I looked good. I like the sweat. They're good. My hair's good. My sweater's good. Every time. This is a very, very old sweater. Yeah. It looks good every time. Thank you. I appreciate it. I that. came in looking a mess. No, you did. You look great. What are you doing? <laughs> I walked in. Uh, the weather here, very lovely. Sunny, but windy, as yeah, you might expect. Yeah. And then I got here, and I thought, oh, okay. It won't be that bad. Looked at myself in the mirror. Poof. That's my hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand that. Yep. If I'm outside for a, a minute, less even, and it's windy, my hair is fucked for the rest of the day. Yeah. Fair, just shave your head, bro. I, I'm with you. I mean, I just got a haircut. It does look good. The haircut looks Thank good. Thank you. Uh, Nick got a haircut, too. I don't believe that for a second. Nick shaved the... Uh, Nick he shaved took the mullet? He took the mullet good off? Good for took, him. Took the mullet oh. off behind him. How Big do deal. we feel? I don't oh, know. yeah, I can see it. I, don't know I think it looks great. Nick, come in here. Nick, they want you. Nick, come in! I, mean, I feel looks... like a little part of me is sort of sad. He's well, like, he's making coffee, I think. I, I see him. I can see I him. I feel like it's the, you know, maybe like season three ended and season four begins. Mm, yeah. And okay. character looks up, turns around, and you're like, oh, this is a character change. <gasps> it's like, gone. Right and then it'll come back mysteriously. Yeah. Like, well, we need to reboot it. Nick, we want to see your, we want to see a 360 here, your, your hair. Yeah. I think your hair looks great. It looks great, dude. Oh, yeah. Always looks great. I think this is like the best that they've ever cut it back there whenever you used to get the. Well, also, maybe I just forget how it looked, you know? No, he could be one. Got, oh. <laughs> yeah. um, no, this my guy does a really good fade. And it doesn't do it too. What I like about it is it doesn't do it too high. Yeah. So my, my, the first guy I used to go to, he wouldn't know where to stop it. And I would turn around and have like one sprig of hair <laughs> on my forehead. And I'd be like, all right, well, we. <laughs> But maybe it was just like a little too high. Yeah. But this guy goes like super low. He starts the line like he does the thing Andy that I like. Mm. Where he goes, okay, we're gonna start it, and he takes the this the like clipper and goes, shing, and just put the line right here, and that's where the skin's gonna start, as opposed to too high. Or and too then the low. fade mm -hmm. begins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the fade begins, and I was like, should we keep it a little longer in the back? And he's like, look, man, it sounds like it's time you want to let this go. If you're gonna let it go, let it go. You can always grow it back if you want. So, thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I know. I'm not used to it. Do you, does that mean you respect me again? Yeah. Hey, Thanks, you look Daddy. Like an adult. Abraham oh, Cordrero with That's a two. Say, by the way. Thank you. Thank two dollar super chat. Thank you, Abraham. And then Mike Townsend, another two dollars super chat says, what? "Barrett, it's Bald Boy Summer. Join me." Do it. You looked great, Mike. 
Yeah, Barrett, let me show you your haircut. Is it, again, Barrett looks great. He looks young again. <laughs> young yeah. again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is before life beats Barrett down, you know? Yeah. This looks great. This Perpetually. Great right? We got I still say shave it. I still say yeah. shave it. Mm -hmm. But I like it. Thank you. I, I like that your response to me getting a haircut was just shave it all off. I still say shave <laughs> it like again. Shave it. Backhanded, like, yeah, it still looks bad. No, but I've all, <laughs> I've always been of the opinion that you looked good with a with a shaved head. Yeah, because you've seen the you've seen the pictures of me with a uh, with a shaved head, and I, I feel like I rock it, especially with. The I beard. think you do. I feel like you're in the the Bruce Willis Fifth Element stage of your life. Which is pretty I want cool. It so bad. That's so cool. I can't wait. I, I don't think you shave it. I can't it. wait. I don't think you shave it because I, I, I just want mine to get shorter and shorter and shorter until it's just like a like the buzz cut, like the Bruce Willis from Armageddon. See, look. You are in the Bruce Willis uh, phase right now. I'm in my diehard phase. Yeah. It I'm not good. letting it go yet, but but people are like, it's not coming back. <laughs> you know what I mean? I will say, like, like, it's not coming my back. My signs get, like, uh, really thick out of nowhere. Yeah. And when I was getting my haircut yesterday, uh, my barber, Irish Paul, uh, yeah. is what we call him. Um, he Ooh, told sweet. me. All of us. Everybody. Everybody I don't calls know. him Irish Paul. Have you not been calling um, him that? And so... The second he starts cutting, he's like, oh, you needed this haircut. <laughs> Mine, yeah. And life's cruel joke, my sides are just as thick as can be. Like these, the sides, <laughs> they grow out and they start looking like... Even more now. They just look like... I can't think of an actor that, that has it, but you know you have the, you have the crown? Yeah. Or just the halo effect? It's Ron and Harry in um, the third movie where they have just like the really puffy hair. Yeah. 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 Abraham. About George's boss in Seinfeld. Uh, George. Yeah, George. George yeah, yeah, yeah. Abraham Cordero Stage, yeah. with a $5 super chat says, oops, forgot to put the message. What happened with the Grandma Gamer deal from Friday with That's Starfield? That's a great question. Holy and her not God. playing it. I'm on it. Josh Topher, 68 months of Prime Gaming, says, thanks for always entertaining. Thank you, Josh Topher. Senny8, 35 months of support. Hey, my name is fucking Irish Paul. Hey, yeah. Irish Paul. Um, thank you, DT Youngster. For a full year. Mighty Mouse, 75 months. Oh, wow. We have 17-month resubscription. Hold on. This is a great from point. From Vicious, 696. So, uh, boo. Thank you, Paris. Uh, surely the Skyrim grandmother did not respond to my comment on her video. Huh? That I have 70 thumbs up. So we will now go to the vlog she just posted a few hours ago and posted there. Mm, okay. We will get... We'll, I'm doing the journalism yeah. that some are afraid to do. Thank you for the $10 super chat from Zaxxon Galaxian says, if you had one year where no new games came out so you could catch up on your backlog, <laughs> what would you play? I submitted this for Gamescast, but who knows if you'll ever get to it with all these new games. See, here's the problem, though. If I had a whole year to play whatever I wanted, I'd just go play Tunic over and over again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, this game is so good. No new games came out, so you can play whatever you want. I mean, I feel like either it's going to be a lot of things or not that many things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Where I, 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 it's an oldie but a goodie, but I still believe it too. Like if I could go get lost in the sauce of DC Universe Online again, I would. If you could just be like, I'm not going to miss anything. I can just go and like learn about what the economy is now, and go do some raids and get some better gear and get some. I, I'd be back in DC. Would I stick forever? No, of course. But then I start working back, and then it would be platinums. Then it'd be like, all right, let's get uh, this God of War Platinum done. Let's fuck it. Let's go get the Metal Gear Solid Five Platinum. Mm -hmm. No way. I just got to wow. I just got to S rank like ten missions, and it's mine. And that's all I got to do. I'd probably do Witcher Three. Nice, that's a good pick. I thought I was gonna be hopping into Witcher Three once the remake came out or the remaster. We all did, right? We released for like an hour, uh, and I had never played it before, so it was enjoyable. And I was like, wow, this I'm enjoying these side missions. Well, this is enjoyable. These I see uh, why people like this. side yeah. characters, really, yeah, yeah. Like, no wonder, no yeah. wonder it's been Who so successful. Yeah, it's really good to end too. And then I just never really, never really went back to it. <laughs> but because a lot of things were out at the moment. And I was back home. And I was like trying to play on like the PS5 there. And like yeah. my crappy 1080p TV that I've had since 2012. I was like, nah, let's upgrade this TV here. Yep. Um, thank you, do Jesus, for 23 months of support. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus Samaro. Jesus Samaro. Um... Tacky the Penguin subscribed for 37 months and says, I'm playing the Final Fantasy 16 demo. Wow. Subscribing over on Currently, Twitch. Currently, at the moment, as right he's now. typing. It's these a demos. very good demo. Good demo. Arrow 52, 37 months. Thank you for using your Twitch Prime on us over here on the Twitch side of things. L. Ro Roffel. 
rolling on the floor laughing. Rafflecopter. 41 months. Pudgy Trash Panda, 13 months of support. Good name. Yeah, real good name. Sage Shinigami says, I finished the Trail series, probably. Oh, that's Trails ambitious. Cold Steel. Tra- that's right. Whenever I see Trails, I think like, oh, that's got to be a typo, and you meant to put, you meant to put like Tales of trials. Symphonia and Tales of... Want to go play the Trials? Yeah, yeah. exactly. I hear the Trails uh, games, like if you are dedicated to them, like the kind of payoff when you get a few uh, entries in is like really, really cool. Mm. So shout out to that series. BJ Bernardo... With a five dollar super chat, it says Happy Belated Father's Day, Greg. Thank you. How much money would it take for anyone on the panel to get a word cut into their hair? Huh. Not that much. Do I get to pick the word, or do I get to know the word before I agree? Yeah, to that's the deal? a good point. Yeah. Yeah. If I can agree to the word, then yeah. Assuming that BJ Bernardo would, wasn't trying to cancel your ass, and it was just <laughs> sure, like, no. and it was just like. Yeah, go ahead. S- a pick, like Sonic the Hedgehog, or yeah. you know what I mean? Like, that's three words, I guess, but triple the money. <laughs> <You know? laughs> or it's, it's not even a deal. word. It's just the, like, goofy-looking Sonic from before they fixed the oh, first movie. Oh, right, right. That's true, yeah. Ooh, we, that's a good one. Yeah. I mean, for me, I'd probably say, yeah, put that shit on the side in the back of my hair. I'd do it for 500 Yeah, I was going to say How about right? the word yeah. pencil? Yeah. Yeah. And we'll be staring at you like... But if, it, yeah. but if it grew back, dollars. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just if it grew back weirdly, it'd be like it. Lo- it, it may look like I don't know, just something else. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Maybe I could get it mind styled in the form of something. Yeah. 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 Instead of get it. What? Get how it. much would it cost to get some shaved in your head? You know, sometimes I think that I would just do it. Yeah. I get so tired of this. <laughs> <laughs> I hate hair. <laughs> uh, CJ splits on with a two dollar super chat says. Andy, can you say come to me for it like Clive? Yeah, sure thing. <clears throat> Ready back away from the mics. <clears throat> come to me for it. That wasn't my best. It was good, though. Thank you. We were, ha- we were having a little uh, VO off, me and Ben, going back and forth. Just you crashed him. A couple you know of voice I mean? actors cutting it up over here. Why are you in more stuff? It's a good question, but... I'm going to tell you about something I'm going to be in later. I'm tell you about something I'm going to be in later. Spider-Verse 3. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> I played myself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, I'm Andy. Oh, you got spider powers. That's cool. <laughs> this is a weird cameo. Nobody's going to understand. Never understand. Like, what, was he from, like, uh, un- Crisis on... Uh, we just know. start he making knows. up a, a story about your... He knows Chris Anka. And Chris listens to the podcast. Like, your comic run Spider-Man was movies. really under the radar and only, like... Yeah, th- it only got released in, Oh, like, you're not Italy. a real fan. Yeah. Yeah. You don't like, have this. hmm we start making copies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a very, very uh, exclusive Marvel snap card. You need to get. Let me try one more time. Come to me, Ifrit. Uh, Joshua. Joshua. That's another one. That's another pretty good one. That's good. John uh, Carson in the chat. Thank you very much for offering $20 for my hair. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that a deal? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll give her the 20 bucks on Patreon anyway. So it sounds like 20 wasn't enough. 20 was not enough. All right. It's definitely north of that. At the what? moment, I'm enjoying it. Look at that. Boom. Coming Once out. you're approached with the number, then you start to really realize. Yeah. That. All right. That's not quite enough. Labor Days, thanks for the 21 months. Appreciate you subscribing here, using your tier one love. Um, I am also trying to bring up YouTube memberships. But man, you don't try do it, you know, it's just like everything's in a weird section. I have to go to supers to bring up super chats and that's a whole different area. I want you to know we we're just it's Father's Day. It's a lovely day. We're just hanging out and having and I forget I, we, I was either having a cup of coffee on the couch or I, we were out playing with Ben at like a park or whatever. And I just started doing a little Greg like thing where I have to fight the smile and I did a little laugh just because I was in my head, blessing, blessing, blessing. <laughs> oh, the Whopper song. The Whopper song. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, no thank you so broken. much, chat, for putting pineapple on your pizza. That's the correct answer. Oh, oh God. Freaks. <laughs> You're one of these people. Bunch of freaks out there. Can't stop um, me now. Tim, out of nowhere, was watching the Vanderpump Rules TV show that he's obsessed with mm-hmm. and then said, I finally saw it, and it was the Burger King commercial. Yeah. Like, how is this the first time you're seeing this? <laughs> For real. But I guess I use YouTube TV, and I'll just, you know, during the NBA playoffs, it was all over the place. So, yeah. Makes sense that maybe if you're watching Vanderpump, you're not constantly seeing Whopper, 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 Junior Double, Triple Whopper, Sunday, Bunny, Pussy, Whopper, I rule this day. 
Have it your way. No, that's not how it goes. Oh, sorry. That's not how it goes. Uh, Steven, with a $5 super chat. Thank you, Steven. Says, I don't play many indie games. Give me a list of five to ten short indies Uh-oh. I should play. <sighs> All right. You'll look at the uh, show. Uh, right no, Hyper Life my... Victor. Celeste. Yes. 100%. Um, Dordon just came out. That was fantastic. Uh, Fall of Porcupine just came out. That was fantastic. How, um, how long is Fall of Porcupine? Like four hours. Okay, great, great. Like it's not going to be a long thing. Undertale. Undertale. Also a great one. Uh, Inscription. John Carson oh in gosh, the chat. You're so right. Inscription. I just bought myself like a special edition so I could like have a physical copy. It's so good. It's Inscription so good. is incredible. Mm-hmm. We were Look talking to, to Ben Starr about how he just like lost himself in inscription. What a what a great experience that was. Yeah, Find that was it. one of those things that in the uh, Game Informer office, no one really picked it up. And then uh, I can't remember who picked it up first, and then I picked it up, and the the vo- our voices combined slowly started to yeah, make yeah, the dominoes fall, trait. and everyone was like, by the end of the year, this is great. That was you love that. I love I, I love, love when you it. see an office turn or something. Last one I'll shout out is Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight's great. Tunic, 100%. You should be playing Tunic first and foremost. I don't know if there's anything that sort of uh, fits more perfectly with the word short and indie than a short hike. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah of course. It's in the of name. Course. Yeah. I thought that out of the <laughs> Oh, yeah, unless we forget. A short hike on oh, laptop dive. Laptop Florence? dive. Oh, you want me to toss over? Um, Katana yeah. Zero. Mm-hmm. Katana Zero was how long? Like maybe eight hours, ten I, hours? I did it in like two sittings, I remember. Oh, little gay, gay, little gay, little little gator game. Oh yeah, also very good. Death Store. No, Death Store is not over Tunic. Get out of here, Dan. Better combat. Something. I like Death Store over. Some tunic. would say, but uh, Tunic's just better. So the end game for Tunic definitely better than Death Store. But you have to get Stardew there Valley. I don't know how we didn't sh- throw that one out there already. Look at it. agree. Stardew Valley, not yeah. a short, not short game short, though. though. <laughs> it can't yeah, be. People were also shouting out Hollow Knight, and Hollow Knight is also not short. Look at all these people. We got, I came in here one day. All of your fans are now indie fans. Inside. Right, we, it's not like we ignore indie. <laughs> we right, never talked about It's not my entire business model like yours, but we've uh-huh, talked. Uh-huh. <laughs> Inside, fantastic. Another reason to play uh, Cocoon, the designer from Inside and Limbo. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. That trailer is just mind bending. It's so it's, cool. It's, a, I love it. I loved what I played of it. It was fantastic i was not a big fan of it before i got my hands on it and now cocoon is one of my most anticipated games i'm here what you got for us same one you already answered about the short indie games oh what about uh echo i didn't read echoes okay then i'll do it here unless it's horrible has uh, hades aged well yeah absolutely yeah. what <laughs> hades came like out that. 20 years ago <laughs> <I know. laughs> uh echo 419 says i asked a few weeks ago and andy told me to shut up my brother is getting my niece into gaming with a PC. How do I stop him from dooming the future generation of my family to PC gaming? I'll take this one. You don't have to worry Andy about told it. me to shut up, or did you? Pa- well, I mean, this is a knock against PC gaming, so mm-hmm. I think you probably yeah, told me to shut up. I do remember this. Oh, it's not him. He's right. saying I gotta, right. we got to stop see. her from going to the dark side. I see. I see. Uh, Echo, it's pretty simple, right? Uh, you just need to sit down and talk to your niece and say, how many cool PC gamers do you know? <laughs> And then she will scratch her head and go, hmm, hmm. All the Minecrafters hmm, on YouTube hmm. that she watches, bro. And then you turn on an episode of Catch a Predator. No, and you say, gosh. how many of these people use the PC? Huh, huh. It's simple <laughs> arithmetic a child it can do. Really it. Isn't. <laughs> <laughs> it really isn't. <laughs> like, it seems it's pretty just, easy to me. You're filling a lot of yeah. gaps that, do not, that aren't there. Just saying. Just saying, you can't argue the facts, the figures. They're there. Thank you, Echo. I'm sorry you got shut down by a rude, rude Andy before. What else we got? <sighs> I think you got the that was the you already got the CJ one with the thing. You hit me with one more refresh. Correlation equals causation. <laughs> Just saying, yes, we man. all know. Yep. Thank you, wasted bandwidth. No, nothing new. What'd you play this weekend? If you can say. Redacted. Okay. Um, and then I played, you know what? I've been playing through also, uh, Redman from the Ashes one. Oh, okay. Cause I, Redman I know I had such a great time with it at, yeah. at SGF. So I went through that a bit and was like, 
ah, oh, let me quit out of it. I shouldn't be done. I was like, no, let me go back. And boss fights are just so challenging and so fun. Um, I played more of the Lies of P demo again, just as a different build. Uh, and Tears of the Kingdom. Look at you. Oh, Resident Evil 5. God, you spr- oh, yeah, you and Ray are playing through. Yeah, Resident Evil 5. Or Earth or something. Yeah. First time playing Resident Evil 5. Wow. How'd it go? <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> like, it's, it's definitely not as bad and terrible, like, C movie that you would uh, expect from, that, that I experienced in Resident Evil 6, but it's still bad in a lot of spaces, and the villain is just suddenly... Like, it's just so out of character Who what's happening in this world right now. And also, I'm shirtless with the... I get to wear the Mad Max costume. I was wondering about that, because I saw the screenshot. And so, is this modded, or is this an unlocked? No, that's an unlocked uh, costume that okay. I guess I got through the gold edition. I bought it for like eight bucks. Gotcha, gotcha. You the costume, great. not the game. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's hilarious. It it It's so... It does not age well. Yeah, well, it didn't play... It, it wasn't... It, it, it didn't come out well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, just like, like just that. not great optics yeah. <laughs> as you're playing it. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, but it's hilarious. It's just a lot of like weird, janky game design things that shouldn't happen and yeah. they do. Um, but it's fun. Okay. It's fun playing with friends, though. Of course. I would never play this game solo. Like, I think it's just kind of a pain in the ass. Makes sense. Bring Shiva back. Yeah, and I'm realizing that like the person that Ray is playing as Sheva, I guess. She never came back to the R universe. And then in RE6, whatever, whoever's playing opposite of Leon Kennedy never came back into the R universe. Like they're just they're just introducing like co-op players that aren't just random cameos. You're playing as these people the whole time and they never show up again <laughs> in any other game. They're building out the Resident Evil cinematic video sure. universe. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, sure. what I mean? it's mm-hmm. kind of it's kind of, you know, crazy. People you can't have it both ways. You can't be mad at Star Wars because it all comes back to Skywalker. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Also, I don't know if you saw earlier, but I did have uh, recommendations for for you, sort of specifically, uh, in the indie sphere. That uh, Myth Force just had a huge update. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Because we love our Myth Force. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. Because like we, well, I mean, they've had several updates since we played it, and we took down that big old boss. Yeah. And I know that we want to go back and get into it. But we need... The problem is we played with three people last time. Sure. And Michael's like, we need Kevin. We need Kevin there as the fourth person to, like, drive you up the wall. And that's what really kind of... That makes the content. Makes the chemistry better. Yeah. 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 So It's a simple uh, pattern. It's one that we've been wanting to get back to. Yeah. Uh, for sure. But it's another one of those that... Oh, I think the problem was when we all went back to it, all of our save data was gone. Mm. And we didn't know oh, why. Dude. That's a backbreaker. And so that That's really, PC right? gaming. PC, PC gaming. gaming. What, what are you going to say? You know what I mean? Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for joining us in the Super Chat section. Appreciate your support, everybody. And I'm going to go stream a game. Me and Nick Is are going to go continue Nick's Tears of the Kingdom adventures. <laughs> and we'll see him struggle through those controls. He's feeling really bad about like not knowing the buttons and all the... I'm like, Nick, I am... Almost 200 hours in, I still fumble through. Yeah, of course. Switching, yeah. The, throwing your weapon when you're yeah, like, oh uh, man, jumping for no reason. So go uh, uh, click the new link, YouTube viewers. There will be a new link that'll pop up here in the chat for you. Uh, and Twitch viewers, stay right where you are. We'll see you in a bit. Bye, everybody. <laughs>